What's up guys, hope you are having a great day and in this video I want to focus on using the console log in JavaScript. What we have right now is running our JavaScript file or our index.html on live server, which is an extension that we have added in the last video. If you look at our URL, you can see that we're using port 5500. At the bottom of our Visual Studio, you can see that we have port 5500. If we click on it, we will close our port. So if we refresh the browser, you can see that Safari cannot connect to the server. And if we click on it, well, on go live again, it will take a couple seconds and you can see that our web server is running again. Now, what I want to do in this video is to focus on running it in the console. Almost all modern browsers have development tools, which includes a console. So if we right click on a page and we click on inspect element, you have, well, a lot of things that you probably have never seen before. What we need right now is the console right here. And this already shuts down a lot of elements that we don't need. If you do not have console right in your tab, you can click on plus and let's close the tab because we don't need it because we need to focus on the console tab. Now, what we could do here is to actually write JavaScript from the console. So what we could do is to create a pop-up by writing down alert. So right here, let's write down alert parentheses. Let's say that we want to say inside our parentheses, one, two, three, four, five. Let's click on go. And we have a pop-up on our screen, which says one, two, three, four, five. So let's close it. And the return value is undefined. And what undefined means is basically the console that is responding to us by saying, there is nothing returned from this window. And you can even do calculations right here. So let's say that we want to know the output of five plus five and the output is 10. We could also execute a function right here. And I know that you probably will not understand what a function is or whatever I will be writing on the screen right now, but just follow along. We could select something inside our document that we have right here by saying document, punctuation mark. We want to use the query selector, parentheses, and what we want to say inside our parentheses is single quotes, the H1 that we have in single quotes. So you need the opening and closing single quote. After our parentheses, let's write down dot. And this, these are all the options that you can change. But what I want to do is to say that the style, punctuation mark color, because we want to change the color, is equal to single quotes red. Let's hit enter. And you can see that hello world has, well, been changed it to red. Well, what is the body actually doing right here? Well, we don't need to select our body right here because the body of our screen will be selected. Let's go back to console. And you can see that the font has been changed to red. And it doesn't mean that we will be working from here right now but it's just to give you a clear overview of what we could actually do in the console. Be aware that whatever we're doing in our console does not stick. So if we refresh the page, you can see that Hello World is back to black again, but it's a great way to test some stuff out before creating the actual code. What I want to do right now is to create a new file in our JS for beginners folder called javascript.js and be aware that the file extension needs to be .js just like when you want to work with HTML, CSS, or PHP. Now that we have created our JavaScript file, we can go back to our index.html because we need to require the file. This can be done right below our body tag. Let's hit enter. Let's write down script, hit tab. And our script has a source, which is equal to double quotes. And well, you can already see the pages that have been popped up. So let's click on javascript.js. The script tag that we created right here is used to define a client-side script. It has a source of javascript.js, and since it's in the same directory, we don't need to add a forward slash right here. Let's go back to our javascript.js, and what I want to do right here is to add a comment of double forward slash, which says log to the console. On the line below, I want to use a function that writes a message to log on the debugging console. 
And the way we log to the console is by simply writing console, punctuation mark, log, parentheses, semicolon. Be aware that you always need to end a statement with a semicolon in JavaScript and almost in every other programming language. And basically what we could do right here is to go inside the parentheses, hit single quotes, and you can see that the closing single quote will automatically be created for us. And we want to lock something on the screen. You need to be aware that if you want to add a piece of text to the console, you need to wrap it inside single quotes or double quotes. In my case, I will use single quotes. Inside my single quotes, let's write down, hi, my name is John. And let me close off my directory because we don't need it for now. Let's save it. And you can see that, hi, my name is John has been printed out in our console. If you do not have Live Server added as an extension, you only need to refresh the browser in order to see the output. To show you what the output is when we log a number, let's create a new console.log and let's write down one, two, three, four. So let's save it. We don't need to wrap it inside single quotes because the code editor will understand that we are working with numbers. You could also see that it has a different color than the string. And this is mostly to misunderstand what is going on. So a string will always have a different color than an integer. We could also do more than a console log. So let me add a comment because we can do a console error. This is basically by saying console again, punctuation mark, and you can already see them. Log error one. So let's choose error, parentheses, semicolon. And inside the parentheses, let's say this is a error. Let's save it. And you can see an explanation mark and the whole row is well read of this is an error. We could also console out data as a table. So let me add a comment which says console a table by writing down console punctuation mark table. And inside the parentheses, we need to add opening and closing curly braces. And we need to define both the index and the value. So let's say that we want to set the index to A, colon, and the value to 1. Let's add a comma, space, B, colon, 2. Let's save it. And you can see that we generated a table right here with an index and a value. And the index is A and B, and the value is 1 and 2. This was it for this video about the console. Mostly, we will be using the console lock or console error, but I think it's good to show you what the other console options actually are. If you do enjoy this video and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.